Hello, we can start. This presentation is uh, about data theft protection. This is something uh, new we are doing to position in a different way a DLP platform, a DLP technology. So DLP is data leakage protection, prevention, and usually it is something complex. Let's say when we talk about DTP, uh, we, we want to position something more security oriented, even if you are using a DLP platform. In a normal data loss protection project, usually we need to define uh, the, all the process to, to, to manage the data security, the data protection. So you need to define who is touching the data, what can the user move how so which channel uh, can the the user use to 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 transmit the information and where the information can can be sent this all this process can be uh, complex especially in uh, um, in some organization where you cannot really know all the data that you need to protect or in those organization where you cannot really define all the processes. And uh, also the classification of data can be a constraint. Sometimes customers have no um, full uh, understanding on all data uh, to be uh, protected. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is a way to start with the DLP uh, with a DLP solution addressing uh, some security needs. In this first slide, you see the different approaches that you can have to DLP, starting from the base with a very basic DLP. What here you can see is DLP Lite. This is what you find in the UTM, in firewall solution, in basic filtering solution. So this is about keyword, phrases, dictionaries. So this is very basic uh, DLP. Then you can introduce more complexity and having regular expressions. So you can understand that a 16 digit uh, information is a credit card and not another uh, ID. So uh, it's something about the syntax, it's something about uh, expressions to understand what kind of data you are moving. Then we have machine learning. This is advanced technique to recognize some content for similarity. So we provide to the solution positive samples, positive templates, and then we provide negative templates, and then we train the solution to recognize the content that we want to protect. Still, until now, we are not really uh, use data classification because we are triggering policies. So we are uh, rising incidents based of the uh, structure of the information basi uh, based on uh, how we, we see the information going out. Then you see behavioral analytics. So again, beside of the content itself, beside of the data, that we are moving, we are looking at the behavioral uh, analysis. We are looking on how the user is sending data, where the user is sending, uh, sending data, what kind of data and what's the format of the data. And finally, the edge of the parameter, the, the parameter is the, the fingerprinting. So this is the more uh, accurate way of recognizing contents. For this, WebSense is having a patent called Precise ID. So this is a way to create a, a fingerprint, a NASH of a specific content to recognize that content or part of that content when this mm, file, this uh, data are going out. So DTP, data theft protection, is a way of using DLP without data classification, without uh, leveraging on fingerprinting, even if we can use that 
after the the DL project is uh, improving in the organization, so in a, in a, in a later uh, stage. So these are the different techniques and these are the different level of uh, data protection that we can uh, that, that we can apply with with a DLP uh, solution. So let's see what is that in in the in, in in the solution. So how we can really do that? So we are talking about data risk indicators. So some pattern, some rules that can highlight risk in uh, communication. Then we have some indicators of compromise. So something that can take my attention on suspicious uh, activities or anomalous activities or users that are compromised, even if they don't really know that. And then you see also suspicious user activity. All of this is about behavioral analytics. So we don't need to really know the content that we want to protect. We are just looking at the behavior of the users uh, and how the, the user is moving data out of the organization. So going in detail, what we can, what we can, um, how we can set a policy for uh, for uh, managing this kind of data theft protection. Here we are also talking about the insider threat. So the threat coming from the uh, internal of the organization. So we can start with policies about disgruntled employees. So employees that are not really happy or that uh, a bit angry with the organization and could want to take some uh, useful data uh, for the outside or for the next uh, for the next job. And by the way, if you look at the statistics, you will see the majority of data thefts happen when employees are close to the to the last day. Hmm? So we can have policies regarding uh, employees sending uh, CV to, to themselves or sending resumes to, to HR. So we can catch this kind of behavior on users and anticipate somehow the, the incident. This is what we sometimes can call predictive security. So we can anticipate the, the, the damage uh, looking at those users who prepare for a data theft. So we can also apply some policies to detect different suspicious activity. Think about mail to self. Hmm? So this is a common scenario that uh, it's very common in DLP presentation, talking about users that use Gmail or personal email to send presentation or to send stuff that they will use for work outside or that they want to review in vacation or that just that they want to, to save in a, in a personal position. Still, this is going out of the corporate processes and this could represent a, a real leakage. So we have different techniques in the solution to understand if a user is sending mails in data to himself on a personal storage or a personal email. Again, we can look at suspicious activities. So again, we are looking at behavior. Note that still we are not relying on data classification. We are not relying on specific um, data uh, identification. We are not relying on fingerprinting. This will come in a, in a, in a later stage. For now, we are looking at the behavior. In this case, a suspicious activity can be a user sending uh, out information 
during unusual hours. Imagine if we can see at the gateway that from a workstation, from an IP, we see, uh, we see communication to the outside at midnight, midnight 30, at one, out of business hours. This is really uncommon. This is really suspicious. So a solution can measure the rate and the type of transaction to see if this is kind of automatic back channel, kind of automatic transmission, communication. And so if this is something that we should uh, look in detail. This is another uh, easy policy that we can set so we can, you can easily define your competitors domains, for example, to see if you have leakage to competitors' uh, emails, so to see if you are having exfiltration of data uh, toward competitors' uh, domain. We can also focus on malware communication. Remember that DTP data theft protection is kind of DLP security oriented. So when we talk about malware communication, we are talking about detection of a known file format, non-encrypted file. So this is a way that uh, malware tools, malware uh, codes can, can use to exfiltrate data. So using a known file format, even if those are not encrypted. So this is still suspicious. Why a user should send an email with an attachment in a proprietary uh, format. In the same way, we can look at encrypted files. So while you are posting encrypted file on, a, on Dropbox, on, uh, on, a, on a cloud SharePoint, malware communication detection. So we have pattern to recognize kind of back channel kind of communication to the external which is really used by malware, uh, malware code. And we can identify, for example, if in the communication we have posts or attachment of password files or data uh, uh, or files disseminations. So again, this is related to, to, to malware. This is related to the behavior. When we talk about data security, you can have different advanced techniques. So uh, DLP in general can leverage on different techniques. You can have drip DLP. Drip DLP means that you can catch uh, leakage even if it happens drop by drop, really low and slow. We can leverage on fingerprinting, so we can classify data or we can uh, be really accurate in uh, fingerprinting specific files and uh, database, for, for example, that we want to protect. Also, we can use OCR, uh, which means that we can read the text from the images that we are going to send. So it's really advanced, but still, if you think about APT, zero day attack, what they have in common is that I don't have a signature. I never seen them before. So the only thing I have is to see how they move, how the data are moved. By the way, this is why we are seeing a lot of interest on sandboxing technologies. And uh, sandboxing is not the, the, the final solution to everything. Uh, this kind of approach with the DLP solution, this data theft protection can be a valuable um, defense against data theft. So this is another piece in the, in the data security approach that can be really uh, valuable also just to start a DLP project. Just to close, when we talk about our differentiators. We talk about easy of deployment for different solution on data security, web and email security with a single uh, console. We talk about uh, protecting intellectual property and uh, extending the, this protection also to mobile or roaming users. 
we are talking about advanced DLP uh, techniques like uh, trick DLP, OCR, and we saw what we mean for data theft protection, which means using data theft risk indicators to understand what's happening on, on my network. Then you see that we can also have um, easy way to apply compliances and to be compliant with the regulations. Uh, and also we are looking at the cloud to be, to extend our data security protection to, to the new adopted cloud services. So this was about data uh, theft protection. This is kind of a uh, subset of, of policies and rules uh, uh, that we can use from our DLP uh, platform. Uh, this can be a valuable, uh, um, valuable tool, a valuable approach to start a DLP project and to make it valuable uh, in, a, in, a, in a wider data security approach.